Good evening, YouTube. You guys are now watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Today, we're going to be doing identifying card effects for Technique Tuesday. Now, I know you guys have not seen Technique Tuesday in who knows how long. And the biggest reason why I haven't did Technique Tuesday is not because I didn't want to. Trust me, I love doing Technique Tuesday. It's because since I stepped out of the competitive circuit, since I stepped out of basically playing Yu-Gi-Oh, um, it's been hard for me to even think of ideas to give to you guys. But now, since I've started back, um, I'm going to be doing Technique Tuesday. Uh, also, shout out to Louie for coming to me and was like, hey, how come you didn't do Technique Tuesday? It really wanted me to inspire me to do Technique Tuesday. Today, we're going to be talking about how monster effects work um, and how to identify these type of monsters. Now, I'm pretty sure this will be a two or three part series because I'm not going to sit here for 20 plus minutes um, explaining to you every possible thing in one sit down. Um, right now, I'm just going to be identifying how flip effects, how ignition effects, and how trigger effects work. And then in the other videos, I will uh, go conditions, uh, quick effects, and all the other ones, and then I'll just go into a couple of combos. We're going to be doing Mermel because Mermel just seems to be one of uh, the. If you're a good player and you know how these card effects work, Mermels are the deck for you. If you do not know how these cards work, you should put down Mermel because it's 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 basically that type of deck. It requires a lot of thought, a lot of skill, and a lot of play, even when it first came out. So first, we're going to be talking about flip effects. As promised, no, I do not run Penguin Soldier in my Mermel deck, but we have to run some type of flip effect to show you what flip effects are. Um, flip effects happen when a monster is flip face up, either by battle or flip summon. If the monster is flip face up, <coughs> excuse me, I'm still a little sick. If the monster is flipped face up and destroyed by battle, the card is destroyed first, and its effect is activated and resolved on the field in the damage step after damage calculation. Since the card is already destroyed, effects like Penguin Soldier cannot target themselves. So basically, what that means, if Penguin Soldier was in face down defense position and my opponent attacked my face down Penguin Soldier, his attack would hopefully be greater than Penguin Soldier's defense. Penguin Soldier is considered destroyed by battle. But, Penguin Soldier's effect will activate... Um, will still activate, I still get to target two card, two monsters on the field and return them to the hand. The reason why Penguin Soldier cannot target himself is because it's already destroyed by battle. So for the people that go, dude, you attack my Penguin Soldier, I'm gonna attack my own Penguin Soldier, then I'm gonna target you monster, put him on the doesn't work like that. Sorry, I just explained to you why not. Now, there are a couple of cards that are just gonna say, F you, Cali, uh, you're, you're completely wrong, and one of them is being Snow Meteor. Um, while it doesn't say flip effect, because that's how you identify flip effect monsters, uh, Snow Maneater works like a flip effect because it says when it's flip face up, destroy a monster on the field. So, with that being said, Penguin Soldier um, is a flip effect and that's how flip effect works. We can get on to the next card. Next, we're going to be doing Ignition Effects. And Ignition Effects are spell speed 1 that, don't re that require manual activation by the card's controller during their own main phase 1 or main phase 2. Now, like I said before, there is an exception to this rule. Um, Red Eyes Wyvern is... A ignition effect. It's spell speed one, but it activates during the end phase. So it's another way of Konomi saying, Duh, F you, Cali. So in Mermels, we're going to get down to Mermel Abyss Lane. Or I'm sorry, Mermel Abyss Miglo, who has not just one, but two ignition effects. The first ignition effect is to send two water monsters from your hand to the graveyard to special summon it. The second ignition effect is to tribute one water monster on the field to for it to be able to attack twice. Now, if you guys are starting to catch a feel for ignition effects, um, they're typically identified because <coughs> they genuinely, they, they typically have a cost. Uh, Mermel Abyssidius is another one. Discard a water card to special summon them. These are cost-like effects, and there used to be something called priority for these type of effects, but I'm glad that they no longer exist. Um, how you identify it is that do something to do something. That's how ignition effect works. Um, prime example, Master Hyperion. The effect to, <laughs> excuse me, the effect to remove from play one light monster to destroy one card on the field is an ignition effect because it requires you to do something to do something. Please do not get that confused with trigger effects, whereas trigger effects say if something happens, do something. This is do something to do something. And with that being said, we can now get on to trigger effects. And these trigger effects that we're going to be talking about are Mermel Abyss Lind and Mermel Abyss Gund. Now, trigger effects are considered to be spell speed 1. But that doesn't mean you can activate them whenever you want. Only when a condition has been met. Whew. Optional trigger effects. Optional trigger effects are effects that don't automatically happen when the trigger condition is fulfilled. The controller and player decides whether to activate it or not. These effects that involve cards like Giant Rat, uh, K-1000, 
can miss timing. So we're going to go down uh, regular triggers, optional triggers, uh, optional triggers that miss timing, and then optional triggers that don't miss timing. Um, that's basically going to sum this video up. Um, first, all triggers are considered spell speed 1, like I said. Uh, but they can activate at the same time. They can form chain links. Uh, for example, let's say if two giant rats attack each other, or for a better example, my giant rat attacks my opponent sure of the blue flame. These two monsters will not miss timing. These type of battle uh, effects, these battle trigger effects, will not miss timing. Why? Because they are both still sent to the graveyard or the both conditions are still being fulfilled for their effects to activate. So my giant rat attacks my opponent's giant rat. Um, they both are sent to the graveyard. Both of their effects activate. They form a chain instead of missing timing. Now, since we can now, since that's done, we can break down two missing timing. The biggest way you can uh, see if a monster effect misses timing, uh, for example, gun will never miss timing. Why? Because gun in its card text clearly states if and then you can. Somewhere in that text it says if and then you can. Actually, I think the first word is if this card is discarded, then you can. So, if you can effects will never, and I repeat, never miss timing. Card effects that say when and then you can. For example, Light Pulsar Dragon can miss timing. And now, I'm going to show you how to force a monster to miss timing. So, let's pretend this Abyss Lind is a Raikou. And let's pretend this Mermel Abyss Lind, uh, or sorry, the Abyss Gun is the Raikou, the Abyss Lind is the Light Pulsar. It is my opponent's battle phase, and Light Pulsar Dragon is attacking my face down Raikou. Um, Raikou's effect is, Raikou is flip face up, and we calculate damage. Raikou is destroyed by battle. So, just to let you guys know, that's how it would work. Now, Raikou's effect activates. I get to destroy one card on the field. I target Light Pulsar Dragon. Light Pulsar Dragon is destroyed and sent to the graveyard. But that's not, there's more. At resolution, Raikou sends three cards from the top of my deck to the graveyard. Since the last thing that happened was Raikou sending three cards from the top of the deck to the graveyard, Light Pulsar Dragon cannot activate its effect. In order for the win, you can monsters effects to activate, they have to be the last thing to happen. Um, Probably case in point, Raikou milling was the last thing to happen, so Light Pulsar Dragon cannot activate its effect. That's basically going to sum up um, trigger effects. I, other than that, really, actually, one more thing that I want to talk about. Mermel Abyss Gun cannot miss timing, uh, and there's, there's a couple of things you do. Since you know it's an if you can effect, no matter what, it will never miss timing, even if it opens its own chain link. There's times where Mermel Abyss Gun will open its own chain link because it cannot miss timing. That's just how it is. Um, people will argue, no, no, it's an optional effect. Point to them that if, and then you can. If they don't really believe it, point to my video. Uh, thank you guys for watching another segment of the Cali Effect. Please like, comment, subscribe, but most of all, enjoy.